All of Blender's sculpting tools live inside of sculpt mode, and you can find that in the upper left corner of the viewport where object mode is the default. You click that and you get a list that includes sculpt mode. However, before we jump in there, uh, keep in mind that these modes are context specific to the objects that you have selected. For example, the camera has no reason to be sculpted and you won't find it in the list. I say this because if you ever are expecting sculpt mode and you think there's a problem with Blender, it's probably because you have an object active that's not sculptable. Mesh objects are sculptable and so are grease pencil objects, but mostly with digital sculpting, you will be uh, using mesh objects. So with our cube selected, one other thing to keep in mind is sculpt mode kind of expects a lot of vertices to work with. It's more artistic, more organic. So a cube with only eight vertices is not going to be an ideal use case. And so I'm going to add many more verts by uh, selecting the object and hitting control five. This will add a subsurf modifier to the object, uh, bringing the total up to about 6,000 verts, which I can apply that and then jump into sculpt mode. You'll notice that the user interface has updated with sculpt specific tools. On the left, we have what are called brushes. And by default, we just have a long column with uh, the icons, but if you hover your mouse to the right side of that panel, you get the double arrow and you can click and drag and get a double column, which is my personal preference. But if you're learning sculpt mode for the first time or trying to get familiar with it, um, I recommend dragging it out further and you'll get the icon with the name of the brush. Now by default, the draw brush is selected. And if we zoom in on our sphere, and if we start clicking on the surface, you can see that we build up additional material into this digital clay ball. And even with those two strokes, this kind of mesh manipulation in edit mode would be far more complicated. So in a nutshell, that's the benefit that sculpting brings to modeling. And this is only one type of brush behavior. If we switch over to the grab brush, for example, this is clicking and pulling out part of the digital clay as if you were grabbing it with your fingers and pulling it out. And also at any point when you have a brush enabled, you can hold shift and click, and that will be your smooth brush. Three very different behaviors, and that's only three of the brushes, which we will go through in detail. A couple other things to keep in mind. By default, you'll notice that your sculpt strokes are being duplicated to the other side of your mesh, specifically in the X axis as defined by the red line in the grid floor. And that is because in the upper right corner, we have your X, Y, and Z symmetry buttons. By default, symmetry in the X axis is enabled. If you think of sculpting in reality, if you're sculpting a head, you have to sculpt the left and right eye individually, the left and right side of the nose, the left ear, right ear. But in the computer, we have the benefit of doing one side and getting the other for free. And if you ever wanna turn that off, just disable the X button and you're only sculpting on one side or the other. Additionally, you can do X, or you can do the Y axis or the Z axis or all three at the same time, which is pretty cool. But more often than not, you'll just be sculpting with the uh, X axis by itself. So I hope this is painted kind of a general picture of what digital sculpting is about. In the next video, we're going to dive deeper into the brushes.